Any any questions? Hello, um, Jude. Thank you so much for coming. I enjoyed what you have to say. Um, I just had a question about working for. Um, I just had some questions like, you've worked for some. I guess you. <clears throat> excuse me. You could say. <clears throat> traditional media companies like Warner Bros and something yeah. like like a new media like YouTube TV that you were talking about yes. in the marketing work that you've done did you find much of a difference um, between kind of like the traditional and the new media and have you maybe found like in in between with like the streaming services companies that you've been working for yes absolutely that's a great question um, and there's huge differences so, for example, when I worked at Warner Brothers, and also Warner Brothers has been uh, uh, part of um, going on for a really, really long time. So, in that sense, they already they operate as very traditional media. So they have a lot of different structures and the way that they do things. However, when I joined YouTube TV, um, it, everything because they, they're they're very experienced in YouTube and they've done campaigns, TV campaigns, social media campaigns, 360 campaigns as well, but they took it into with a very techy and very innovative lens. So for example, I was part of the um, World Series uh, campaigns in 2017 and 2018. And traditionally you do 30 second spots on TV. And this is what I saw in every and in, in all companies. However, for these campaigns for for the NBA Finals and World Series, YouTube TV actually took took it to the next level, which was like let's do instead of thirty. Cause everyone does thirty second spots. Let's do a sixty minute spot, and you know craft a story, tell the audience a story that they can um, engage with, and also. It is a longer spot, so it, it is more, um, it is clear that people will actually take a look at it or look at it because it's gonna be going on for 60 seconds for a minute. Um, so that was super, super innovative. Also, any idea that um, any of the, the team members had, it was super easy to just apply it and, and put it in motion. Whereas at a very traditional company like Warner Brothers, like you have to go through a lot of different levels of approvals and reviews. Um, so it's, it's very, very different. And I think maybe um, an in-between would probably be Hulu. Uh, where they do want to they strive to be innovative, but they also have that background and, and a lot of what creates the culture is, is the people. And a lot of the team members, they had been working in very traditional companies. So then you had kind of like that mesh of like tech and traditional uh, media. Uh, so it was very interesting to see um, those two very uh, different um, uh, sides. Thank you. Hello, hello, thank you so much for coming. This is really cool um, hearing from you. Um, my quick question is, um, in marketing, how much do you do in-house, and then how much uh, do you work you know, with outside companies or, or whatnot? Yes, great question. Um, so every company is different. For example, at Nubo TV, where I started my career, we had an in-house creative team. And um, this is super, it's very unique in that way that they know the campaigns that we're working on, they know the brand, they know the tone. So this was super helpful in getting things um, in a good place. However, um, because they had been doing this for a really long time, it was hard to come up with very, very innovative campaigns. Um, so it has their, its pros and cons. And then at YouTube TV, we had an agency that developed all the, the campaigns for us. So they came, they pitched different uh, campaigns, and uh, we talked about how to tweak it to make sure that it touches our audience. And then they went ahead and created that um, that spot or that creative um, piece that, that we wanted to, to develop. Um, and in this case, they were very, very, very innovative, but sometimes they missed the mark on the brand and the brand tone. Um, so then I guess you have to more or less find a, 
All right, if you all are glitching, maybe a quick refresh um, as Jude comes back. Thank you. Come back. <laughs> Thank you, Jude. <laughs> All right, any more any more questions? Also wanted to say, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Um, happy to, to talk about any questions you may have. Um, if you don't wanna ask them in this platform, um, happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one and, and we can go through any ideas or any, any questions you may have. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I actually had one other question um, that came in. And it it's, uh, says, have you ever gotten emotionally invested in a project where it was more to you than just it's a job? And if so, can you please explain that? I think you touched on that a little bit earlier, but maybe expand on, on yeah. that. You know, when something's just really, you, you've been really invested in it and how that went. Yes, absolutely. I think um, that that's a, that. A great example of that it would be when I joined YouTube TV. Um, it was a very awesome team that allowed me to just create my own campaigns and go with it. They just let me um, let me be free in, in that sense. There's um, you know there's a lot of different types of management and a lot of ways that people work together. And YouTube TV, the team that I had, it was very um, hands off as long as you're doing your job and you're um, you know, responding to, to partners and making sure that they're happy, then you know, feel free. So I was actually part of a lot of different campaigns that were super, super fun. Um, I worked on a campaign at, at, at Disney California Adventure uh, where we had YouTube TV messaging and a booth and things like that. Um, so I feel like any project that I worked at at YouTube TV, it was just like super, super fun. Also, uh, one of the major differences was, um, you know, there were so many people that wanted to work at uh, with YouTube TV. So whenever we talked about projects with with Fox, with NBC, with CBS, um, they were super excited to work with us because it's it's YouTube, it's the brand um, that that the weight of the brand. Um, so, and I actually, when my two year contract ended at YouTube TV, I was super, super sad and devastated. And actually I cried every time I told any one of any of my coworkers, Hey, like I actually, my contract is ending. Like, you know, I'm not going to see you again. And I couldn't like, it was like a period of time that I couldn't tell or talk to anyone. So I had to kind of like wait until a little bit in the last second before talking to some of my coworkers and letting them know that I wasn't going to be able to to work with them. Um, but it was just such a great experience and I'm still very close friends with some of them. So um, I think this was one of those very emotional situations where I get super invested in the projects and the team in the company. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, I think that would be the example of that. Yeah, great. Thanks for sharing that. We have one more question, and that's Rachel. Rachel, take it away, please. Hi. I'm just wondering, what is the one thing that you know now that you wish you had known when you got started? Wow. <laughs> great question. Um, so when I started my career, I was actually very worried that I wouldn't make it in 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 the world. So I took very risky decision so i took a risk to go to europe and work there and and during towards the time that i was going to come back i was a little worried like oh i'm going to go back to the us am i going to find a job like am i going to like you know um are people going to want to hire me so i had all these doubts in my head and um even when i joined uh, nuvo tv for the marketing role i was like am i going to really make this because i don't know i know nothing about entertainment i don't know i know nothing about um marketing so i had like all these questions and uh, throughout all these like looking at back to to those years like yes you are gonna make it so i think that would be something that i would tell myself um instead of having it's good to have doubts but it's it's not good to 
to to stay too long in those doubts and not do anything. So I feel like because I felt doubt, like that made me that pushed me to just take um take challenges and talk to people and join organizations and just push myself to get to a better place um but at the same time um it, it's not good to talk too bad about to yourself that you're immobilized so i think that would be something that i would tell t- to myself um that everything's going to work out it's going to it's going to be okay but <laughs> Great, thanks. I guess it would help if I unmute myself before I start talking. Um, we actually did have a couple more questions. I was told we have a few more minutes um, that we can continue, and a couple of other questions came in. Um, the first one um, would be, uh, how much should an indie feature budget uh, for marketing? What is your advice on that? This is a great question um, because, you know, you want to make sure that your budget um, is is aligned and you're not going over budget. Um, So it depends what you're going to use that budget for and what will be the return on investment. So if you already have a marketing campaign, you need to think or have think on a way of a CM, how would a CMO of Apple think about this project? So, um, so your indie film is like your biggest product that you're going to launch to market. Um, if you, uh, invest this much money in, um, social media in hiring someone to do email and, uh, doing a launch, uh, that whatever you spend will have a return or you can more or less put a a number or an amount of how the reach that you're going to have once you spend that money. So I would suggest that you research um, what is the reach of the various channels that you're going to utilize and spend money on. Um, and then from that, then you can determine what will be the, the, the channels that will have a bigger ROI, um, and look into more ways, um, that you can, um, utilize that budget. So use the budget to, for the items that will have a greater ROI and also research, I, um, marketing channels that will not cost you a lot of money. So that that way you have a balanced uh, marketing campaign so that if you run out of money with your budget, then you can rely on those items that um, don't require money. 